Surprise! There's more than seven continents on our planet. Argoland, a hidden continent, may help us understand how our planet will look in the future. To find out how it hid from us and what secrets it holds, well, you'll just have to keep watching. Ready for a mystery? Scientists have been looking for a piece of land that's been missing for over 100 million years. Not exactly newsworthy, since people search for information about our planet's history all the time. You'd think it was probably this minuscule island somewhere in the middle of an ocean. Well, you'd be wrong, because this continent used to be as big as the entire U.S. territory. For a long time, geologists have been wondering whether a massive chunk of contemporary Australia vanished into thin air. Some believed it was simply hiding somewhere on the ocean floor. But thanks to some Dutch specialists and seven years of investigating, we now know there are bits and pieces of this lost land mixed underneath the lush jungles of Southeast Asia. The continents we see in our geography manuals these days are like scattered pieces of a puzzle. There's even a nice experiment you can conduct to see for yourself. Find a world map online and print it out. Cut out all of the continents and play around with them for a while. You'll see they all fit together. Probably the most striking thing you'll see is how South America perfectly fits near Africa. If you close up the oceans that were formed in the last 200 million years, the continents look like they form a giant letter C. And that C is what scientists call the supercontinent Pangaea. It was swimming in an ocean called Panthalossus, and the inner portion of that letter C had a smaller stretch of water called the Tethys Ocean. It is in this small ocean where things get interesting. Back in the Jurassic period, this vanished continent, which scientists started calling Argoland, vanished and left a hole in Australia, now known as the Argo Abyssal Plain. Geologists initially believed this was all due to a process called subduction. It's when one piece of the Earth's crust dives under another and recycles it into the planet's mantle. Usually, specialists track this continental vanishing through off-scraping. That's how they figured out, for instance, that India bumped into Asia and gave us the majestic Himalayan mountains. But for Argoland, things were a bit more complicated. Bits and pieces were popping up in places like Myanmar and Indonesia. But they behaved like these time-traveling relics, looking way older than when Argoland supposedly separated from Australia. It immediately raised the question. If one continent can behave so weirdly, how many others are out there doing the same? Thankfully, scientists have now put together the entire timeline of Argoland and figured out its mystery. It didn't sink or get swallowed up. It simply transformed into an Argopelago, breaking into smaller pieces called microcontinents and floating away from Australia. These mini continents then took a little journey before settling down in Southeast Asian jungles. This discovery fits right into the whole Pangaea puzzle. It helps us better understand how continents break up and make up, all in one discovery, revealing secrets of biodiversity and climate back from in the day. If you'd like to find out more secrets about history, civilization, or random day-to-day -day objects, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Like, for instance, the mystery behind this invisible species line in Indonesia. It's called the Wallace Line, named after the British explorer Alfred Russell Wallace. Over 150 years ago, Wallace was on a journey around the Malay Archipelago, visiting thousands of islands. What he found was that animals on one side of this invisible line were considerably different from ones on the other side. This invisible line is like a wall between marsupials and tigers, for instance, or honey eaters and trogons. But now we know that around 35 million years ago, Australia broke up with Antarctica and collided with Asia. And this continental love triangle triggered significant changes. It didn't just change the way the land looked, it also messed with the species of animals on each side of the Wallace Lawn. In more recent times, a bunch of specialists published a study saying this collision and climate chaos made Asian species comfy living in the Malay Archipelago. Meanwhile, the Aussie animals weren't as happy with the new environment. It was too hot and wet for some, and others just couldn't handle the tropical island lifestyle. 
The discovery of this continental shift towards Asia might also explain a recent finding of a human species that didn't seem to make any sense either. You see, in this hidden cave in the Philippines, archaeologists stumbled upon a new human ancestor. It seems that about 50,000 years ago, on the island of Luzon, there was this ancient human-like species. The lead researcher believed this finding was crucial for understanding human evolution in Asia, and it named this new species after the island, Homo luzonensis. Now, here's where it gets a bit confusing. The bones found by archaeologists had one small problem. They had a weird mix of traits that hadn't been seen together in any other hominid species. Smaller teeth, similar to ours, yet hands and feet that were more like our ancient humanoid ancestors. It was those throwback limbs in particular that connected this human species with the long-lost southern territory. That's because they have this primitive look, like these hard-to-pronounce guys, for instance. Only these two species are separated by 2-3 to three million years of time and evolution. Many have wondered, is Homo luzonensis really a new species? Not everyone is convinced. But it may also explain why living creatures are also affected by the constant shifting of the land underneath us. Now, just because they haven't changed much during our lifetime, it doesn't mean our continents will look like this forever. They evolve from this large megacontinent, and they'll most likely end up in a similar position in the future. On that note, a geologist from a European university tried to predict the future of Earth's supercontinents. As a starting point, he used an earthquake that occurred in Portugal back in 1755, when tectonic plates behaved a bit differently than they should have. After years of research, he came up with a theory in 2016. He believed that the stitches between these tectonic plates might be coming apart, setting the stage for a bigger rupture. It's like when glass cracks between two holes in a car windshield. If this happens, a subduction zone could stretch from the Mediterranean all the way up past Ireland, bringing volcanoes, earthquakes, and new mountains to these areas. If all goes according to this plan, the Atlantic Ocean will disappear, and so will the Pacific, turning into one large stretch of water. Instead of the seven continents we know today, we'll get a new supercontinent, which he called Arica because it would have Australia and the Americas at its heart. Now, it's not the only possible scenario, though. Novo Pangaea might be another, and it's easy to foresee. The Atlantic stays open and the Pacific closes. Then there's Amasia. For this one, you'd have to imagine the Arctic Ocean closing and the Atlantic and Pacific staying open. Everything shifts to the north around the North Pole, except Antarctica. One final scenario would be called Pangaea Ultima. Slow down the spreading in the Atlantic, and a new subduction plate pops up on the America's east coast. Well, either way, if all the continents collide in the future once more, some say it won't be fun to experience. It's believed that in around 250 million years, we'll feel like we're being trapped in a sweltering, soggy plastic bag. Weirdly, that bag will be the best place to live on Earth, the coastal areas. As for the inland spots, they'll be sizzling, like a desert on fire. Many of the species of animals we know today might not make it. As for us humans, we'll need to be creative if we want to withstand the heat. We should be thankful, though. These digital models are still great because we can use them to test all sorts of interesting ideas. For example, how these supercontinents would mess with tides. Taking future space travels into consideration, these models can help us understand the climates of exoplanets, too. Those are located outside our solar system. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.